Welcome to a screencast about RSuite Mark Logic in the Dita Open Toolkit. I'm going to just do a quick demo of the RSuite system, and uh, we'll talk about some of the details later. So here I'm logging in. This is the home page, and you'll see the upper left corner. There's this Tasks button, a Content button, Reports button. Click on the Tasks button. This really shows the workflow. Uh, so the power of RSuite is the workflow engine. The data open toolkit, I call it the data, data transforms, uh, the role-based security, and even the distribution mechanism. So it makes it uh, easier, tries to automate as much as possible some of the tasks needed to develop content. So let's take a look at this content button right here. And you can see this main pane. These are called the home containers. Let me just show you a little example. Here's a directory structure. I'm going to drill down further into this directory here and just give it a chance to expand. So these are currently books under construction. It's really just test data that we have set up. Um, so these are referred to in our suite as content assemblies. I will go ahead and talk about. I'm going to do a quick demo and show you how uh, content is uploaded into our suite. So in this case, content originates in a Word document. So the Word document is a manuscript. So authors can create the content using a Word document. We have a copy editor team that could transcribe whatever the author uses into the standard manuscript format that we use. And let's take a look. So here's the Let's look at Tinseltown here. I'm going to see this directory structure here. I'm going to upload a manuscript that I have. Let's give it a second here and here. This menu, let it cascade out, and there's this upload files. And I'm going to go and choose a little manuscript. I think I have one right here. Here we go. Let's open this guy up. Let me uh, use that future reference. Open this up. Let it open. Let it upload. And there it goes. So we have the Word document in there. I'm going to uh, show you what that document looks like just uh, quickly. So I'm gonna, this is the manuscript Word document that I just uploaded. And there's these uh, pages and we have styles. Each page is marked with this style. Now I'm using Windows. Word and I could come here and I could show you how the styles are done. This button here is handy. So if I hover over here, it's going to tell me what style is selected. Let's notice the TTL. These are all styles that will be, this is what drives the generation of the did XML. So example of a copyright page, you notice the style here is intentionally named this way. Scroll down further, there's these page numbers and dedication sections. And each one has a unique uh, style. All this gets transcribed into data XML. Okay, let's just get back right to our suite. And so we uploaded the document. What's great about our suite is everything that gets added to our suite uh, has a nice rich versioning. It has rich metadata. So let's take a look. I hit the inspect button. And it's going to give you some information about this Word document that we just uploaded. Well, it's not much just yet, but here's uh, some generic information. This is a, maybe a URI that's used within MarkLogic. It's not really because uh, it goes through a, a separate API. Um, so you can see updated by me, timestamp, date timestamp. Let me, uh, there's this notion of variance. And, the metadata is probably what you, everyone cares about, this concept of a global metadata, and then there's contextual metadata. So you could have, uh, we could talk a little more about that later, but I like that distinction. Um, so aliases, there's opportunity to use aliases. This is the file name. Let me take a look at the version history. I think that's interesting. So I uploaded it. It gives you a version. What everything that's in R Suite has a versioning. Uh, this here tells you if the Word document, um, other containers, content assemblies that may be using this Word document. Uh, this one here shows you if that 
where document was duplicated and used elsewhere. Uh, this one here is the permissions. So it's very, uh, you can see the roles that are set up. Um, unfortunately, this is not using the MarkLogic uh, security model, but it's using a, it's using the Java, uh, custom Java API, and we'll, we'll show you that later as well. So, so that's the metadata. Let's take a look at how we go about creating XML. So let's create some data XML. All I gotta do is select this directory cascade out, you see the data transforms, and it says generate XML from Word. Let's do that. Let's give it a few seconds. Great, there it is. So we got a successful generation of data XML. Click OK here. You'll see that this data subdirectory is created. Um, let's take a look what that data XML looks like. Data is really this idea of a data map. Data map has pointers to the different data other data documents let's take a look at that this tinsel town here is the the data map it's really just going to be an xml document with references to other xml documents so let me click on this menu item and you'll see here it is so in this case uh, the data map this is the flexibility you get from data xml it's it gives you these uh, references to other data documents and also speaks to some of the reusability so that's uh, in this case all the these sub these references to other did documents are separate chapters so each, each did XML document is a chapter let's take a look at one of those right now let's look at chapter two here and what I want to look at out of curiosity is um, my expectation is that there's just raw XML and, and minimal styling and you have these P tags in here but this is it this is the data markup language uh, did XML but it does have some markup capabilities in there um, there you go so we'll talk about it in a future screencast maybe we'll talk about the searchability of this of this XML anyway we have this did XML this is the flexibility you get from this in our suite we talk about uh, the multi-channel output from here now that we have this uh, created I could go ahead and I could generate PDFs so I come here call the multi-channel output I could generate PDF EPUB XHTML let's um, let's create an EPUB let's give that a shot and what it does it spawns a separate task and you know in a few seconds you'll see that EPUB document uh, appear in this directory we'll do the same for um, let's do the same for a PDF. And, and the key here is to do it from this directory right here. There you go. Let's try the PDF one. But the most important one is um, ICML. ICML, I should say, in copy. So in this case, we use uh, the Adobe InDesign. Uh, product to create the book it's a very powerful uh, tool for being for letting our book designers really uh, leverage their skills so let's show that so once you have the did XML I'm gonna create in copy XML so let's to do this you just select this did a map file here let it cascade out and you can see under data transforms there's this generate in copy from XML Let's click on this, give it a few seconds, and you'll see another subdirectory get generated. Great, there it is. Now you can see the success message. So it created a whole new set of XML files. And if I was to refresh this directory, you'll see the this ICML subdirectory. Let's give that a second to expand here you go this is what the InDesign XML looks like this was all done through another data transform we'll talk about those transforms uh, in a little bit but let's take a quick view of what that looks like there you go uh, this is what the ICML uh, looks like and uh, it's not uh, drill down too deep into this right now but also want to show you here here's the PDF that was just generated let's take a look at that EPUB document that was just created 
and we're just going to download it. And I don't want to check it out. I'm just going to download it. Take a look at where here, we, here it is. It's a nice um, EPUB format. Um, it's really just test uh, content. So, but it shows you the table of contents and let's see the ability to uh, look at the ebook. Great. Okay, that's uh, pretty much what I wanted to show you here. Um, next step, we'll show you a little bit in design. We'll talk about some of the code. What I really want to show you is the Data Open Toolkit. So uh, we'll see you in a few minutes. Thanks.